In this video, we're going to start explaining the different MX deployments for high availability. In this time, we're going to see the classic one. You can see the topology here. We're going to say that these devices, these MXs, are configured as a NAT mode. So you have the one interface and the LAN interface, which is this network. The LAN is going to be below, and the one we're going to say that this can be the internet or the ISP, however you want to call it. So how is this specific deployment high availability? Because we have two MXs. We have MXA and MXB, and they're going to be configured to act seen in the network and in the ISP and the LAN and the one as just one device and not two divided at the same time. With that, it means that they're going to have a virtual IP address if you want. If you don't need it, you don't have to do it. It depends on how many IP address you can get from the ISP. But if you have a virtual IP address, it's going to be a virtual IP address for one one and a virtual IP address for one two. You have six public IP addresses in this instance. You have one from one one, two public IP address, three for one one from MXB, four for MXB, and virtual IP address one, virtual IP address two. So if we want the high availability completely for two MXs in that mode, you will need six public IP addresses. Okay, so having all these six public IP addresses, let's take a look to the LAN. The LAN, if you go to the address and VLANs in the dashboard, you don't have to configure both MXs. The only thing that you have to configure from the LAN side, if you go to the address and VLANs section, is just the VLANs. You don't see another section or additional section for the secondary. So any VLAN that you configure here, like say VLAN 10, VLAN 20, is configured on both at the same time. So if you put the MX, Let's say the MX IP address 10.1, which is going to be the gateway for the devices downstream, is going to be the same 10.1 on both the MXs. The same thing in VLAN 20, if you put like 20.1, I'm assuming that you know that it's XX.10.1 and XX.20.1. So if you put those two, it's going to be the same, the default for both, and you don't have to configure it again. Now, in this scenario, what we have is in the LAN, is the high availability. You can see we have a layer to switch and another layer to switch here. Let's say layer to A and layer to B. In order for the LAN to have high availability to reach out to the MEX, you will have then one link from switch A and another link from switch B for the primary, which is in this case, this MX. And since the MX potentially it's going to fail, you have to fail over to the MX B and that's why you have high availability for two paths to go to the MXB. In case that the situation is failed, the network will be failed to MXB. And availability between the two switches in case of one of these switches fail. Then every, all the traffic can be supported by just one switch and then set it to either the primary or the secondary. Now we get this part of the LAN. In the one, you see it. So you have one, 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 two. Could be one ISP or two ISPs. And the same, one one and one two with this one. So we're gonna hear the different traffic flow or the behavior of this high availability when you have this specific design, which is the recommended by Cisco Meraki, if you have the devices in that mode. So what happens is now, this is gonna be the primary, this is our primary, and then everything is on and you have the two one connections. So the high availability will work as follows. First, we can assume that this link is down. So if the one one is down, all the traffic then is going to fail. All the traffic from the network is going to fail to the one two uplink that you have. So if before you have like a dual uplink load balancing, now all the traffic is going to go through one two. And this is still remains as the primary. So if again, another uplink fails, so it means that this MX is not able to talk to the Meraki cloud and it's going to be considered as unreachable. If it's unreachable, then this MX will take over and now this will become the primary. And since this one is going to be the primary, you have the same situation with the two ones. What it means is the one one is going to take precedency and that's going to be the primary. If you have load balancing, you're going to use both, but that's going to be the primary. If this one fails, it means that you have three uplinks that are failed. Bad luck for you, but at least you have the one, two, 
which will gonna be used for all the traffic to go to the internet. So that's why it's the high availability in that case. So once one of these is rec recuperated, you can come back this one as the primary and then the whole process starts again. So that's how you configure a 2MX security appliance in NAND mode to work as a high availability from the one side and from the LAN side as well.